Okay. Joining us now is Representative Jim Himes. He's a d uh, Democrat from Connecticut who serves on the Intelligence Committee and the Financial Services Committee. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, Allison. We have a lot of intelligence questions for you this morning. Let's start in Saudi Arabia because as we speak, the funeral for King Abdullah is underway. Are you concerned about the future of the relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia now that King Abdullah is gone? Uh, not particularly. You know, uh, uh, King Salman is a known quantity. You know, he is, he is one of the more senior royals there. He'd been governor of a state in Saudi Arabia. We know him well. Uh, now, you're always a little concerned whenever you see a transfer of power in a non-democratic society. And, of course, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia has and will be a strong ally of the United States moving Forward, particularly, of course, as you've been talking about this morning, uh, as they see instability, maybe chaos, uh, you know, to their south in Yemen. Uh, you know, I think uh, w one of the issues that hasn't come up, which is important, though, is, is uh, you know, not only is Saudi Arabia an ally, but they're also, you know, a, a country that we need to push to get them away from the bargain that they have made for generations, or at least for decades anyway, with their own uh, radical Wahhabi uh, extremists in Saudi Arabia, which of course, if you trace back a lot of Sunni extremism, goes back to that bargain that the Saudi royals made with their own extremists. So that's a, a conversation that needs to happen you know, in the background uh, with this ally of ours. Let's talk about Yemen and what's happening there this morning. In intelligence circles, did it come as a surprise that the government so quickly gave up with, uh, to the Houthi rebels? Well, you know, we've been watching for some time now the Houthi rebels uh, uh, make remarkable progress in Yemen. And look, uh, you know, this, this current president, who is very much a friend of the United States, and this is, of course, something that we really worry about. You know, Yemen has, is a location from which, uh, let's call it a platform, from which we go hard after uh, AQAP, the uh, al-Qaeda group that uh, uh, we have reason to believe was associated with the Paris attacks. Uh, but no, these guys have been making progress for a long time. Uh, they're not just a random desert group that came out of nowhere. They are backed by the Iranians. Uh, you know, they're getting training, uh, we, we, we suspect, and, and other support from the Iranians. Um, and so, uh, no, I wouldn't say that it comes as a complete shock, but yes, it did happen uh, uh, very quickly and, of course, in a pretty abrupt fashion. And what we've learned this morning in talking to experts about the Houthi rebels is that they were tired of being marginalized, but they really don't want to run the country. So now what? Well, it's a little hard to say, right? They, of course, are Shiites. Shiites are, are a minority uh, in Yemen. Yemen is, um, you know, not necessarily what we would think of as a, as a classic nation state. Unfortunately, it maybe is a little bit more like Iraq, where you have different sects, you know, that are sort of uncomfortably put together around in, uh, within borders that they maybe do or don't agree with. It is obviously a, a venue in which the Saudis are competing with the Iranians, the whole Sunni-Shiite break that you see all over the region. Uh, so it wouldn't, we don't actually know what their, uh, what their ambitions are. At this point, uh, we're obviously very concerned. They uh, are aggressive towards us. The one bright spot is that uh, uh, if there's one group that they don't like as much as they don't like us. They are, of course, at war and don't like al-Qaeda. So in this bizarre region of the world where, for example, in Syria, we find ourselves, if not working in concert with Iran, at least working side by side with Iran and going after ISIS, uh, in Yemen, this group that I think does worry us quite a bit is, of course, an enemy of al-Qaeda, and that is uh, a bright spot for us. I want to talk about the Japanese hostages that are being held by ISIS at this hour. We understand from other media reports that ISIS has actually started a countdown this this morning uh, towards the execution and beheading of these Japanese hostages. What on earth can Japan or the United States do to ever stop this unfolding massacre? Well, you know, this is this is one of those really ugly boxes that uh, any country with um, with hostages in ISIS's hands find themselves in. There is evidence that ISIS has released hostages for whom ransom has been paid. Now, the United States is very, very clear that we do not pay ransom. It's a gut-wrenching, terrible decision because, of course, we saw what happens uh, so vividly and so horribly what happens when ransom is not paid. But, of course, when ransom is paid, now you've got a business. And ISIS recognizes that, you know, while we bomb their ability to sell oil, which we've been doing uh, pretty successfully, here's another business. And so it's a terrible uh, spot for anybody to be in. You pay the ransom, you encourage that kind of activity, you don't pay the ransom, uh, and of course, 
seeing all too horribly what, uh, what transpires. And of course, ISIS is demanding, as we understand, $200 million from Japan. Publicly, Japan has said that they're not interested in negotiating with ISIS. Do you have any other information as to what other back channels they might be able to use? Um, you know, I don't have any specific information, certainly nothing that I can discuss, but, um, but uh, you know, you know from these situations that it's not just, you know, uh, a country's government reaching out. Uh, you know, there were in, in, in situations that we faced with some of our own people who were released, you know, you can work through countries like uh, Qatar, you can work through religious organizations uh, like the Red Crescent. There are lots of opportunities, but unfortunately, of course, what you're dealing with here is a group that, yes, wants money, and I think if they suspect that there was ransom in the offing, they would hold off on some pretty terrible things. On the other hand, as you just pointed out, they're also very interested in recruits at a time when the United States and the Allies are, are, are making pretty strong uh, inroads against their people. Yeah. Congressman Jim Himes, thanks for all the information this morning. Nice to see you. Thanks, Allison.